I'm finally getting to it, guys. <music> Greetings, Gemstone. Ditch your boy, Templeton Page Taylor. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Hidden Gem. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And on today's episode, I'm finally doing it. I'm finally pushing out my Thousand Arms review. Thanks to an inner voice inside my head that said, you need to follow up on what you say and stop making all these promises that you can't pretty much keep or else you're going to lose everybody. I don't want to lose you guys, so I'm finally putting this one out. Now, I do want to say that yes, Thousand Arms is a hidden gem. People do know about it, but when it first came out, a lot of people thought it was, the, uh, it was a sequel to Wild Arms, which we all know with it having one through five, Wild Arms that is, a PSP game and a mobile game only in Japan, that is obviously not the case. Thousand Arms is its own individual game. Very comedic, very fourth wall breaking as well. I don't want to spoil too much of it, I want to jump into the review, so here it is guys. Developed by Red Company and published by Atlas, Thousand Arms was a hidden gem that came out of North America in 1999. You begin with a hunger complaint from our protagonist, and his name is Rodent Victory. Excuse me, I mean Mice Triumph, who is driven from his decimated home. Flashback to his past, and we find out that our boy is a spirit blacksmith. What's a spirit blacksmith? A person who can forge amazing weapons with the help of women giving off spiritual energy to imbue into said weapon. You do this by going out with various women, both party members and NPCs, all throughout the game. Mice ends up getting to a town called Boysby and tries to defend a random girl and his sword breaks, all the while getting beat up. He wakes up to finally meet the young lady, Sedina Donfrey. He then meets her brother, Giable. Giable sends Mice on a quest to fix his broken sword and then Fort Teague, and you meet Musa, your third party member. Little further down the story, you meet the Dark Emperor and the Dark Acolytes. They are looking for the Dark Blacksmith, the one who can wield darkness and light at the same time. You find out that Giabal had an apprentice who ends up becoming evil. After more indirect story events happen in Boysby, Mice, as well as Sedina, are told to find the Holy Flames before the Dark Emperor does. The story is one that has you go from point A to point B with lots of comedy. Thousand Arms doesn't take itself too seriously. A good example of that is the fourth wall breaking that happens all throughout the game. NPCs will call you out as a game protagonist or get upset because their lines don't have any voice acting. It's great and quite refreshing to experience something so silly and different. With that said, let's head on to the gameplay and the battle system. While on the world map, you can move the camera 360 degrees and get your bearings wherever you need to go. While in town, the camera will shift constantly and swing wildly as you're constantly having to move it which is a huge annoyance. When in dungeons the camera is fixed and you can't always see where you're going. A very bad choice in my opinion. The battle system is very different from most JRPGs of its time as well. You have a party of three but you can only use two of them. Your front party member who does physical attacks and there are three types of physical attacks. Your normal attack, a multi-attack, which shows your front character repeat their normal attack animation over and over, and a critical attack, which shows your character in front do some after-image animation for strong attack damage. Your backup, who casts spells and uses items as well as standby, only do those things. Spells and items are self-explanatory, but standby was very interesting, as your first and second backup would do actions that cause status effects, increase an attack, or lower an enemy's defense, for example. I personally would buy these things called magic bottles for the backups so that they could also attack the enemies as well as your frontline character. The third character or second backup was really worthless in my opinion because they really did nothing but collect experience and level up. Seriously just along for the ride unless you really suck at battles 
Then after your first character dies, your second character will be your main character and your third backup, your second backup will be your now new backup. Enemies can do the same thing, making for some interesting battles back and forth. Dating is a major thing with Thousand Arms, as this is how you upgrade your single weapon by forging at a smithy. You date women to unlock skills, spells, and strengthen your weapon. That's right, one weapon is all you get and you increase that single weapon throughout the entire game. Interesting concept and I like it. You don't gotta go out and buying a lot of weapons and things like that. Mainly just the armors. You can give gifts to multiple women and play their specific mini games to increase your intimacy level with every girl. And you can date a lot of them. The intimacy level though of every girl can only be as high as Mice's charisma level, which maxes out at 10. The women's intimacy also maxes out at 10. If you want to be OP, date every girl that you can. Mice also gets these things called elementals, which he gets from the Holy Flames, which are beings that he can summon in battle, and this is for your protagonist, and only him, and those are his skills, in which they can only be used a certain amount of times depending on your level. Same with your team's abilities as well. One little thing also that's kind of neat are the photo booths. You can take pictures with each girl that you date, and depending on the intimacy level, and whether they know you're going out with another girl or not, Depends on whether they're going to smile or frown or make silly faces. That's a very fun feature, and one that I really liked. With that said, now we're going to go on to the sound. Well, there's not very much to say about the sound itself. The music is very modern throughout the journey, but there are some catchy tunes and atmospheric music that I felt were very proper at the times. Also, the game has this really great Japanese opening song, which, with the scenes that it shows, makes it feel like an anime opening. It's a really catchy song and very great visuals to look at. It also has the song that you've been hearing throughout this entire playthrough, which is the melody that plays at the opening title crawl. I mean, opening title scene, not crawl, I apologize. Other than that, when it comes to the music, it's not very memorable. As for the voice acting, there are a lot of vocal tracks in this game, a lot of vocal tracks throughout the entire game, which is great for a PS1 game at the time. But a lot of the characters are over the top, while others don't seem very over the top, they seem very monotone, as if the recording was done on separate days. So the conversations are very different and they don't flow very well together. But there is one particular character that I really loved, although he's a bad guy, his name is Bandiger, and he is so over the top and he does his voice acting so well that he's my favorite character throughout the entire cast. Again, not a whole lot to really say about the sound and the voice acting. Pretty much I summed it up right there. If it's something that you like when you play the game, good for you, but it wasn't really my cup of tea at the time. Or replaying it. With that being said, sure right? let's move on to the graphics. Visually, this game looks like they took from Tales of Destiny, with hand-drawn sprites and 3D environments. But many PS1 games did this, and for the time, it was phenomenal, especially for JRPGs. Some of the art looks like a digital comic book style game with 2D anime style cutscenes and the backgrounds are full of polygons. These were innovative loading screens back then and one thing that made the story very enthralling. But that was how these types of games were. Getting excited to push the story forward and see what was going to pop up on your screen next. Thousand Arms does have some stunning cinematic scenes and one of my favorite ones is Nelsha who argues with baddies, but since her ability is to wear different costumes, she ends up looking like an adult and all dolled up, and her as well as this baddie, who are also dolled up, throwing insults back and forth about their looks. The battle graphics that looked amazing on an old school CRT TV aren't as pleasing on a modern day television, but still detailed. 
full-size sprites on a 2D view with 2D backgrounds. The special move character animations and art look more like something from a gallery and way better than the sprites themselves, but they don't quite fit in the game, really. It's putting a 2D drawing in a well-modeled 3D environment, and it just doesn't fit in my opinion. But these moves can be OP if you're willing to grind, and the game definitely has a unique look. But I feel like the frame rate slows down while you're on the world map due to graphics of Mice's walking animation. Well, that's all I have to say for the graphics themselves. Decent, but not over the top wow. And with that being said, let's head back to the chair. So, there you have it. That is Thousand Arms in a nutshell. I'm pretty sure there was a lot more that I could have done. Um, maybe there's uh, reviews out there that other people have done maybe better than I have. But that's how I feel about it, you know? It is a very good game, in my opinion. It's one I always will enjoy, you know? Not one of my favorites, you know? But it was so different at the time that I loved actually playing it. I enjoyed the whole story. The one thing I really did enjoy is the fact that nobody got what they wanted in the end. And I'm not going to spoil too much of it just by saying that. Uh, is enough. It is such a great, interesting, different game. Yeah, it's got its flaws, this, that, and the other. I was never a big fan of having three party members when you only use two, and that's it. There's really no real purpose. If I had to give it a, a rating, I'd probably give this game maybe an 8 out of 10. Yes, I enjoyed it that much. Probably a B- minus if you want to do something like that. Definitely something that I would recommend you definitely got to check out. Look for it. Now, it is a little bit pricier online because it is such an older game and it is very difficult to find. But if you do get your hands on it and you do have a PS1, definitely jump into this bad boy. It is so much fun with the uh, anime style cutscenes and the funny dialogue. The fourth wall breaking throughout the game is what really got me the most. I love the fact that NPCs would call you out on uh, what you're doing, who you are, and why they don't get any vocal dialogue. Uh, that is so great to me. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I am going to be uh, cutting this off right here. Please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell to see my latest videos. I'll see you in two weeks, and do me a favor, gemstones, stay shiny for me.